Many of you have requested a video about AWS EKS or Elastic Kubernetes Service. So that's what we'll be covering in this video. We'll go through what is EKS, how to use it, and the actual demo of creating a Kubernetes cluster with EKS the easy way. For a quick overview, AWS is one of the most popular cloud platforms, which has a tons of services for different use cases. And EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, is just one of those many services. So what is EKS? It is a managed Kubernetes cluster, meaning AWS will manage the master nodes for you. It will create the master nodes, install all the necessary applications on them, like container runtime, Kubernetes master processes. It will take care of scaling it when needed, doing backups on that, etc. So if you have a small team of people, then usually it's a good idea to let the platform do this maintenance for you so you can focus on deploying your applications in Kubernetes without worrying about whether master nodes are properly backed up, etc. This means you only create and worry about the worker nodes. So let's see how you can use EKS. Suppose you and your team have a small project which you want to run in Kubernetes and you want to do that with EKS. In order to create the cluster with EKS, there are following steps involved. Before you even create a cluster, you need to do some setup or preparation. First of all, obviously you need to create an AWS account. There is a free tier for one year when you're a new user, so you can take advantage of that. Then you have to create or have a VPC. It's basically your virtual private space in AWS, basically a space where you do your own stuff. It doesn't interfere with other AWS users in the cloud. That's basically what VPC is. Then you have to create an IAM role with security group. These two terms, in my opinion, are too obscure. So here's a human translation for you. You have to create an AWS user with a list of permissions. Permissions to create and do stuff with EKS service. Once you have these things set up, now you can go and create the control plane of the cluster, meaning the master nodes. You create the cluster with the AWS role or this IAM role, which obviously has to have a permission to create and configure the EKS cluster. Here, just choose some basic information like name of the cluster, which Kubernetes version you want, which region your cluster should run in and so on. You set some security for your cluster and note that you can do this setup or creating the cluster process. You can do that either using AWS UI or management console or AWS command line. The next step, once you have the control plane, once AWS creates all these master nodes, you have to create worker nodes and connect that to cluster. On AWS, these worker nodes will be some EC2 instances with certain CPU, RAM and storage resources. So how do we create worker nodes and add them to the cluster? We create them as node group or group of nodes and not a separate EC2 instances. When you create a node group, you choose the cluster it will attach to or join to. You define also security group for that. You select the instance type of EC2 instances. So basically you choose which resources your EC2 instances should have. And with node group, you also have auto scaling, which is pretty cool because based on your needs or based on the cluster needs, depending on how much load the cluster has, new worker nodes will automatically be added or removed in the cluster. So for that, you define maximum and minimum number of nodes. So maximum number of nodes it should scale up to and minimum number of nodes it should scale down to. And you have some other configuration as well. And once you create the node group as well, so you have your worker nodes connected to the cluster, finally, you will connect to the cluster from your local machine, right? Because you want to deploy your applications from your laptop or local computer using kubectl, which is Kubernetes command line tool. So in this step, you basically configure kubectl to talk to the remote cluster. Now, at this point, as I have listed all the stuff that you have to do in order to create a cluster, 
you may be thinking that's a lot of effort for just creating a simple Kubernetes cluster. Maybe you're not very good at AWS, you are just starting off and you don't want to learn all these services. You already have Kubernetes to learn. You just want to create a cluster and start deploying your containers inside as fast as possible. And you're right, I think it's relatively complex compared to other managed Kubernetes services like Linode's Kubernetes engine or DigitalOcean's Kubernetes service. But AWS is of course very powerful and that increases the complexity. And also it's one of the most popular providers. So for example, at work or in your projects, you might have to use it. But the good news is there is a way to simplify this process of creating a cluster on AWS much faster and more efficiently without having to do all of this one by one manually. And you can do that with a command line tool called EKS Control. It is not an AWS tool, it is from Weaveworks actually and has a lot of contributors from community. Now I'm a huge fan of understanding the concepts of how a technology works its architecture and what's going on behind the scenes. But if there are tools that make working with this technology much easier, then I like to use them. Usually these are tools that are created by community or people that know this technology better than me or who are specialized in that. So it makes sense to use that knowledge. Why reinvent the wheel? So in the demo, we will create Kubernetes cluster using EKS control tool. So basically the advantage of EKS control tool is that instead of going through all of these steps that I mentioned in creating the services and configuring all this stuff one by one manually, either on management console or from the command line, instead you just execute one single EKS control command that basically does all of that in the background for you. And you don't have to configure anything because it uses all these default values. Of course, if you want to customize some stuff like set the cluster name or fixate Kubernetes version or define which node types you want in your node group, you can override all these different values using parameters, but you still have just one command. So with that, let's jump into the demo and see EKS in action. So the first step is to install EKS control so that we can create a cluster using that tool. And as I mentioned, it's from Weaveworks. So we're gonna first install the Weaveworks homebrew tab. And now we can install the EKS control. And as you see, it's also installing some of the dependencies like here, this is the kubectl, AWS IAM authenticator and some other dependencies. And now we can actually check that it was successfully installed by executing just the version command. And here we have the version. As a next step, we'll create a cluster using the EKS control here you see in the Amazon EKS, I have no clusters, it's empty. So we're gonna go and create one. Important to note here that EKS control command has to connect and authenticate with AWS in order to create the cluster. This means before you can execute this command, you have to have your AWS user credentials locally in the path like this. I put a link in the description how to do that and how to configure that so you can go and set it up first. And command for that is EKS control create cluster. And this command would actually be enough. This will create a cluster with all the defaults, but you can override all multiple values using parameters. So we are going to do that just to demonstrate. So first of all, I'm going to override the name. We're going to call it test cluster. Let's also set a version of Kubernetes. We can also um, define a region. Usually it's the one that's nearest to you. So I'm going to choose EU central one. That's my nearest zone or region. And these are basically the cluster information. 
In addition to that, we also want to create worker nodes, right? And the worker nodes are created in a group, as I mentioned. So we are gonna add some parameters for that node group as well. So we're gonna give it a name, first of all. Let's call it Linux nodes. And we can also define type of worker nodes or basically types of EC2 instances because they will become worker nodes. When creating EC2 instance, you usually have this type to select. So you have different types depending on how much resources this virtual server has. So it starts with the lowest resources and you have type with um, much more resources. Uh, this is just a demonstration. So I'm going to go with T2 micro. This is one of the smallest. And I'm going to set the type here. And the last thing that we are going to define is number of worker nodes that I want in that node group to connect to the cluster. So we'll set it to two. That should be enough. And I'm going to execute it. And here you see a lot of stuff start to happen. It's building a cluster, first of all. It's created all these subnets and VPC and all this stuff in the background. I don't have to worry about all this stuff. And if I go back to my cluster overview, soon enough, I should see a cluster appearing here. So this will actually take uh, quite some time because AWS EKS cluster creation takes relatively longer. So we're going to wait until the cluster is ready. So one thing to note here is that this command gets executed with the AWS user credentials that I have stored locally. So basically that user will be able to later access the cluster, make changes to that, etc. So maybe to note so that you know which user to execute this command with. Now, as you see, EKS control is great for creating a cluster on EKS. But if you will be managing several clusters or just prefer a graphical user experience to a command line tool, Numata, our sponsor who made this video possible, provides a web console for simplified provisioning of EKS. Also, after you provision a Kubernetes cluster on EKS, the maintenance and management part begins. You need to provide proper backups and restore, optimize resources and so on. Nurmata EKS Manager solves these day two Kubernetes operations pain points by providing a simplified management across all your EKS workloads and clusters. Nurmata made a special offer for my followers. The first 30 signups get three months free. Check out in the video description for more info. So let's get back to our cluster. So the cluster was created. And here you see now the node group is getting created with those two nodes that we defined here. So if I go back again and I refresh this, see cluster active and there's some data that we already see here. So now the EC2 instances are creating. So when they're ready, we should see them here. And this part will also take some time. So the node group was also created. As you see here, it has two nodes in that and it should be connected with the cluster already. So if I go back, let's refresh this. You see we have two EC2 instances running. Another thing that you can also see here is the kubeconfig. This is basically a file that is generated whenever you create this cluster. So basically this is a file that has information about the cluster so that kubectl on your local machine can connect to that remote cluster. So it will include uh, the endpoint of the cluster, the certificate and some other details. And here you see it has been saved in this location. And now when I execute kubectl, I can actually use that config to connect to the cluster. So here you see kubectl command should work with config. So basically the config is already set. We don't have to pass it as a parameter. So if I do kubectl get nodes, I get my worker nodes listed here. So they're both ready. And here's the Kubernetes version that we set. So basically we have a cluster. We're connected to that. We're using kubectl and we can actually start deploying applications inside, doing queries in the cluster and so on. So as you saw just right now, Using the EKS control tool makes it super easy 
to create and deploy Kubernetes cluster on AWS EKS, where you don't have any effort of creating all these components by yourself. It's all done automatically in the background. And if I'm done with a cluster, for example, if it's a test cluster, I can pretty easily delete the cluster and all the resources that were created here, the easy to instances, the node group and all this stuff, it will be all cleaned up in the background using the tool. So I'm going to do EKS control, delete cluster, and we just need a cluster name. We call it test cluster. And if I execute this, this also took a while. And here you see all cluster resources were deleted. So if I go back here and reload this, I should see deleting status as well as for my EC2 instances. So everything is terminating, deleting, you don't have to interfere and do anything manually, which is good. But as I said, this process takes some time. So to recap, we went through what EKS services on AWS, two different ways of creating a cluster or Kubernetes cluster with the Elastic Kubernetes service. And you also saw a demo of how to actually create the cluster using the second, the easier way using EKS control tool. With that, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.